There was some snickering going snickering on. Snickering in the media. In the, uh, all right, so there's a, a number of ways we can go with this. First of all, what a, what a guy does on his private time, if he's not mm -hmm. getting in any legal trouble right. away from the game, usually you leave him alone if he's doing his job. In this case, the guy's been demoted to the bullpen, and then there doesn't do his job. So do you have, And apparently his teammates. There are some people there that are not comfortable with it in his own locker room. I got an old adage from many veterans before my time. They always told me, don't let your night job catch up with your day job. You have to perform in this game of baseball. There's so many distractions. If you start spending too much time out at night, it'll start showing up on the field. So for Matt Harvey, at this point for me, it's time for a change of address. I mean, the bottom line is expectations in New York are just too high at this point. I don't know if he's ever going to be that pitcher again. I mean, it might be best for both parties just to part ways. Get him somewhere else comfortable because the guy still can pitch. He's not that 99, 98 guy anymore, but he still has a tremendous amount of talent. I hate to see a career ruined because of a lot of media, especially in New York City. Well, that's I not a place. That's not yeah. a place to have a problem. Okay, so New better York for City. him to be out of town, but he's a free agent after the year. I mean, just get rid of him. I mean, who would be interested in trading for him? I'm sure he, his skill set is good enough. He can revive himself somewhere. I think people are going to take an opportunity for for Matt Harvey. But you think about it too. This is a result-based business, and I don't think Matt Harvey is showing that he has worth. In New York, there's time, and I agree with you, Frank, it's time for him to move on and go somewhere else. There's other teams that will take him on and hopefully get something that's different. A change of scenery might be really good for Matt Harvey, but when you think about it, it really is about your results on the field. Mm -hmm. His results are not good. We saw him in San Diego this weekend. The velocity is not even there out of the bullpen. It's 91, 92 miles an hour, and it doesn't have the finish that he has. That's the reason why the Mets not because of his off-the-field stuff. Mm -hmm. It's the results on the, on the field. Yeah, maybe the Mets are better off. They're, I mean, they're on the fast track here. They got a chance the way this team is going. Maybe removing him helps their atmosphere for uh, success. Trevor Bauer of the Indians. There's a lot to take in here, but I'm going to just <laughs> kind of simplify. It started with a question on Twitter about the Astros. Are they doctoring the baseball, throwing spitballs? Look at the spin rates of Verlander. Call there's some, you know, the spin rates... The key topic. So, so Bauer says if there was just a really quick way to increase spin rate, you know, what would you do? A couple of hundred. Arm. Imagine the steals you could get on the trade market if only that existed. <laughs> so, yeah. And among the number of Astros that responded, and this is Lance McCullers. Jealousy isn't a good look. You, my man, referring to Bauer here. You have a great stuff. Worked hard. Uh, like the rest of us, I will. I won't ask about spin rate. A spin on my uh, axis on my four scene and A, and you put the dollar sides to be polite. You Money. Can, you, can, <laughs> you can fill in the A. All right, a way to shoot back. All right, so let me, before we get to this, I'm, I'm fascinated because we sat and talked about this. How many, you know, doctoring the baseball has been around forever. As fans, we assume, hey, that's cheating, that's bending the rules. What, uh, today, what percentage, more than half, uh, would you say pitchers in all of baseball are doctoring the base? I, I would say over half. Over half. I, I mean, You'd I, agree I, with that. I, I, you I, see I, how these balls are flying out of the ballpark? Well, I, I'm just asking. I mean, every pitcher looks for an edge. Okay. It's always been that way. All right. And so that's but, why it's up to the, the umpires to really watch the ball game. But, yeah, but, there, this is, but that's breaking the rules, right? Well, I mean, I mean this, this is, this is, you're... it's a competitive advantage. Yes. I, I think it's one of those things. You're, you're in a competition mode. You're not worried about seeing who's doing what. I, I think it was just understood. When you were playing, it still happens. It's a competitive advantage. What's your reaction to, to Bauer's comment? I mean, it could have some relevancy. I mean, <laughs> if it was a it's hitter. A pitcher. Yeah. Talking about another pitcher and a whole pitching staff. If it was a hitter complaining, then it sounds like you're whining a little bit because these guys are way above pitchers. Well, should, One of the best staffs I've seen in a while. I, I, but when there's a pitcher accusing, you know, pitchers to pitcher, they know the tricks of the trade. There are ways of making the ball tack a little more. Gum. Uh, yeah, that was mentioned two know, ago. Different things that the little Aren't tackiness players looking to get for this that bigger spin with rate. cameras everywhere? Can't you spot this kind of thing? Well, you can spot it, but you have to also be uh, aware of it and showing that it is a concern, maybe looking forward. You remember Michael Pineda. Michael Pineda, yes. to me, well, that's flagrant. He's sitting there uh, yeah, all down obvious. your neck. Right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a problem. But I think it's just the awareness, and here's Michael Pineda, too. You, John Farrell's looking. There's Somebody a substance to it. it. They're looking for it and what's happening. Typically, it's on your glove just to have what's going on. But then there's a big spot on your neck. That's a problem but it to did, me. So it does give you an advantage in terms of spin rate, right, which makes it more difficult. It gives the pitcher the advantage. I look at it this way. It's competition. You're going out there and trying to compete against these guys. If they have a better grip of the ball, I'm okay with it. I I'm want a, them to locate. I'm going to tell you right now, we all know the ball has changed. Yeah. There's been an equipment okay, change so on the ball. It happened from decade to decade. So what do you do? You find a way to get a better breaking ball. These guys throw the ball 95 to 100. Why not have a better breaking ball? 
All right. I mean, bottom but, line are the is Astros... until you catch someone, who cares about you? Are, are, so yeah. are the Astros doing it better than everybody else, or they have better pitchers? They I have mean. better stuff than everybody yeah. else. Okay. If you so look top starts. to bottom, their stuff is legitimate. When you're even going before this acquisition, it's really difficult mm -hmm. to say, hey, a Garrett, Garrett Cole is struggling. This is a guy that was a, a number one. Now he's a number four for the Houston Astros. Leads league in strikeouts. Yeah. Yeah. I sure hope, you know, if Bauer is saying this, the Indians, all their pitching staff is clean because they're <laughs> yeah. going to come after right. him, right? If they get called out. A.J. Hitch had the best line. The manager say, hey, sweep your own porch. You know, we'll take care of things. Exactly. At the end of this month, they play each other mm -hmm. uh, seven different times, the uh, the Indians the intensity and the ramps Astros. Up. That'll be fun to see if Bauer or who's pitching or who's spinning their rate or whatever. <laughs>